So you uh, you went uh, against in the last two weeks. You faced two of the best teams in the league, in uh, in the Seattle Sounders and New York City FC. I don't think it gets a lot easier to face the Colorado Rapids, who won the Western Conference next year. But uh, one team you generated a lot of chances against, the Sounders, and another team you you struggled to create chances against, in NYCFC. Of those two games, what do you think were the differences that you need to be more effective with uh, against the Rapids at home uh, this week? Thank you. Well, in order to, no, thanks to you. Against Colorado, well, we are playing at home. At home, we we need to dictate the, the way we want to play uh, in both phases, defensively and offensively. So we need to to create those chances when we have the ball, also in transition, and defensively try to be a little bit more more aggressive. At the same time that we are organizing, so are going to be key. Uh, always, uh, as we saw against New York City, our line of confrontation was a little bit lower. You know, trying to, to close very specific spaces, but we play at home and we need to play for a win. Thank you, Alex. Let's go to Alex Morgan. Hi, Alex. Thank you for joining us today. Alex. It's good to speak with you. Um, what specific things are you looking out for from Colorado Rapids? What do you think makes them a dangerous opponent uh, and how do you think you can shut that down? Well, I think that first of all, they have changed uh, the last game. They changed formation. They have been playing with three, five, or in the back. The way that depends the way that you want to look at. Uh, the last game they played with uh, that line of four in the back. So we need to be prepared for for both possible formations and and see in what way we can advance with ball to create uh, chances attacking. And obviously. Is a team that they, that they don't mind to to put the line of confrontation lower, and, and if we don't have patience to move the ball uh, and control the transitions, it's going to be difficult. Thank you, Alex. This question comes from Anthony Passarelli. He asks, what is your assessment of Tanner Beeson's performance so far this season, and do you think he's made a case to earn more playing time even as Nathan returns from suspension? Well, there is two different things, I think. Uh, first is Tanner. Tanner behavior has been amazing always. Uh, now I can see him more uh, from inside because I, I, I have him every every day in training, but I saw him before, you know. Uh, and he always has been training well. He always is concentra- concentrated and focused, so he's a player that you can re- is reliable. And but it's uh, a different situation because Nathan... Uh, we know the how much or how important is Nathan for the club. He's a right foot too, so I think it's, it's to find the balance and, and providing opportunities, you know, for these young young players that we have. Thank you. We'll take uh, two more in English, starting with Fabian Reckel. Hey, coach. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Fabian. The topic of discussion in the media this week was Kid Cal possibly playing for the Mexican national team. What do you think of the player, Kid Cal, and how do you plan on using him this year? Well, I know Kid uh, since the first moment he came here. We, we know each other very well. I have been with him in, uh, you know, in individual meetings when he came here and joined the, the U-17s. So I think he has a lot of potential, a lot of uh, room also to improve tactically. Um, and in relation with the with the Mexican uh, federation possibilities, I think it's a personal decision that he has to he has to decide. He has to make that decision. You know. Thank you. And our last one in English is from Jamin. Hi, Alex. Thanks for taking uh, another question. Um, We've talked before about the importance of getting guys like Jutsen and, and Shofis back. Uh, they've been out on the injury report for some time. Are they making progress toward being able to rejoin the team? Have they begun you know, regular practices with the team yet? What do you see as the timeline for the return for those two players? Thank you. No, we, they, they still uh, training a part of the, of the team with the athletic trainers. Um, so we are not going to have them uh, for sure this week and I'm not sure the, the next one also the next one too so they still are training apart 
ya, ya no paro el team in this moment. Thank you, Alex. We'll now move on to our Spanish language portion and take two questions from Carlos Justiz. And Alex, please uh, go ahead and reply in Spanish. Alex, eh, buenas tardes. Eh, primero que nada, eh, la primera es del partido. Eh, el, el partido pasado, sobre todo al final, y, y no, me hablaste un poquito de eso en la primera pregunta, eh, el equipo sufrió por, por las bandas, ¿no? Y dijiste que era una parte importante de, de, de New York City, pero en general el equipo le ha costado en la temporada en esa transición defensiva. Y ahora en esta, esta semana que dices que vas, vas a, a por el partido, eh, ¿qué, ¿qué tanto ha, ha sido la mejora o qué tanto se tiene que seguir trabajando en esas transiciones en, en defensiva para, para mejorar el equipo? Por supuesto. Bueno, las transiciones defensivas son importantísimas. Las ofensivas también. Eh, es un tema que, que muchas veces va relacionado con lo mental y con la reorganización defensiva. Eh, respecto, respecto a eso es seguir trabajándolo. Seguir trabajándolo durante la semana, insistir, insistir, insistir y, y, y hacer entender a los jugadores que, que esos momentos son importantísimos y son de, tienen que ser de gran esfuerzo mental y físico. Y eso lo mejoras entrenando eh, con la intensidad de los entrenamientos. Eh, y respecto a New York City, bueno, eh, entraron, nos encontraron por banda derecha al final, eh, pero bueno, ellos eran muy buenos eh, entrando por dentro también, con Rodríguez y Castellanos, creo que la primera parte lo hicimos muy bien y al final, lógicamente, llega un momento que, que, que te encuentran ¿no? con esa calidad. De todas formas, creo que los chicos estuvieron fantásticos. Y, y bueno, la segunda, eh, este, este sábado eh, eh, se celebra la herencia mexicana en el el estadio, eh, para, para ti como alguien que habla español, que, que también es eh, inmigrante en esta tierra, ¿qué, ¿qué significa para ti ver que el equipo se toma ese tiempo de, de pensar en, en, en su gente, en su gente que habla en español y bueno, poder vivir un partido así, ¿no? Porque también le da otro sentido especial. No, siempre es, siempre es bonito. Es, creo que, que, que este club siempre, siempre ha pensado en, en, en esos momentos, ¿no? En, en, en con las diferentes, de diferentes países, tra tratar de, de, de tener a todo el mundo en cuenta. Así que me parece, me parece fantástico. Y siempre que hay un evento así, y, y lógicamente yo soy español, pero soy latino, eh, 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 me parece una fantástica idea. Es algo muy bueno. Partido, no, 